Hi everyone. So welcome you all in our next video of the AWS interview questions series. And we have created this uh, video because many of our viewers, subscribers have asked us. So first question that many interviewers will ask you in any interview you are giving at entry level or a beginner level, you can say, they will ask you like, uh, what are the AWS services you are familiar with or you have used till now or you have learned till now? Okay, so all these questions the answer will be the same okay so if you are from like a ui background backend side or any other development side or testing side you should be familiar with some set of services which we call as basic services like ec2 s3 and lambda so ec2 is for like creating the instances where we can like create install any software we can write the code or we host anything you can do multiple things there Okay, next one is S3. This is for used for like storing the data, storage service, it basically. So you can store the data, you can do multiple things on top of that data. You can play with that data, okay? Then we have Lambda, which is a serverless architecture where using Lambda, you can run some query at the backend, run some script at the backend, and it will produce your result within minutes only, okay? So it's do not you do not need to like create any cluster any instance any virtual machine for utilizing the lambda it's because it's serverless so these are the basic services every interviewer will ask you as a beginner's level okay now if you tell interview that you are working with data like data analytics or uh, data analyst you have worked like any tool you are familiar from data engineering side which can be like emr which is a server uh, like cluster management tool where you can create the Spark, you can spin up the Spark or MapReduce or any other things uh, with the big data you can do inside it. Lambda is also here. We have discussed it about just now. Then we have Glue where you do not need to create any cluster. You just you uh, write the your code in Python or any other language like Scala and these languages will be supported by Glue and uh, it will perform ideal jobs. You can write there, you can schedule it. Okay, you can keep the parameters. So many things you can do and Glue is also a serverless tool. Then Athena, which is again a serverless, you do not need to create any cluster for reading large scale of data from S3 or any other location, you can do that. Then we have Airflow. Airflow is basically a like open source tool, but AWS also provide as a managed tool, which you can use for orchestration purpose in the data engineering services. Then we have software development services like uh, EC2, Lambda, API Gateway. If you are familiar with networking side, you are giving interview for networking, they will ask you like, what is VPC or uh, virtual private cloud, subnet, security groups, net gateway net instances so these question they will ask you basically if you are applying for networking services okay now if you like uh, go for aws interview then they can ask you that question also like uh, what is the difference between aws and google cloud platform and microsoft azure they can compare like different uh, cloud platform provided by different companies like amazon provide aws gcp will be provided by google and microsoft provide the azure Okay, so these are the cloud providers. They provide various services. Some set of services are similar and some are different. Okay, so if you talk about AWS, then it has so many services, like it's ideal for larger company, it's flexible and have wide range of services to utilize. And it's uh, having global reach, like it's so much uh, reachable, like uh, so many data centers, regions, you will see in AWS that you can't see in the Azure or Google. Okay, while on the other hand, Azure provide hybrid solution. It's uh, like a good for Windows based uh, organization. Those who want to migrate from uh, like uh, on-premise to cloud and using Windows, then it will be really helpful for them. And if you are doing the first time cloud migration, they will be helpful and very supportive for that. And it's also ideal for startups and developers as per the cost perspective. Then we have Google, which provide like customer uh, container based models. It's completely based on that. And it have like a uh, cost efficient, eco concise options. So many things are here also like uh, ideal for cloud based application or software. If you want to host there, you can do it. Like uh, if you're looking for uh, any, you are creating like uh, Android application development you are doing and you want to keep the database inside the Google cloud that you can do it easily by using Google services. Okay. Now, next question is how you will read data files on AWS by using a very less cost effective solution basically interviewer is asking you so the answer is you can use athena so athena is like a interactive query solution basically you can write the sql query you can store the data in s3 bucket and by using the aws management console you can create the workflow you can write the query statement by using sql okay so column can be like uh, you are basically taking the data from csv file which you have stored in the s3 bucket okay this query will run it will create table pull the data from sql uh, csv file from s3 bucket and give you in the Athena worksheet, okay? That you can download again also for your any like analysis purpose, okay? 
now next question is what are the amazon s3 storage classes so it's a very important question like uh, uh like 90 percent interviewer will ask you if they will uh, select any s3 question to ask okay there are so many uh, storage classes available in s3 uh, like a standard intelligent tiering infrequent access then glacier or deep archive so active like basically or um, like majorly we use the standard classes uh so we store the data and we can do uh, like frequently access the data okay and it's uh, the data will be in active state while intelligent tiering it will change the data access pattern uh like on the basis of how we are accessing the data it will change the storage class on the basis of that okay and uh, it will charge you per object monitoring fee okay now infrequent access if you are not uh, uh, like uh, accessing the data frequently on daily basis then you can store in this class it will charge you less okay and then we have one zone so you can recreatable less access data you can keep there then retrieval fee will be in the gb then we have glacier and deep archive you want to store some like data which is less uh, like rarely you are using like after one year two years or after many years you are using that data so you want to store that data for minimal cost okay and it will take minutes to hours in the retrieval of data then also it's okay for you then you can go for these options okay so these are the storage classes available for amazon s3 then another question let's come on to is what are the instance types in amazon ec2 so in ec2 we have our uh, different instance types like uh, general purpose compute optimized memory optimized accelerated computing and storage optimized then if you talk about general purpose mostly we use like t2 micro why because it's a like a very less uh, cost you need to provide for this type of instance and you can use it for any type of workload whether you are hosting a website you are doing some smaller task like playing with any software like docker etc you can do with the t2 micro then we you have m5 that is also balanced and good for the consistent workload okay then you have compute optimized so it will basically have the high ratio of compute to memory so it will do the faster computation okay and you can utilize it then you have memory optimized it uh, these are basically good for large scale of databases or data sets okay and uh, in memory computation will be performed in these very effectively like if you are creating emr cluster if you want to have any uh, instances connected with emr cluster then you can go for r4 so that will be helpful for you m5 r4 these will be like a uh, uh, useful with the emr and these are like a memory optimized and m5 is general purpose but yeah r4 is memory optimized then you have accelerated computing it good for graphics and gpu related use so you can go for p3 these are p is for pictures okay so that is like a, if you want to remember then you can use this way then you have storage optimized which we have like h1 i3 d2 these are for like a storing the data balance of compute and memory you can do that if you want highest disk ratio you can go for d2 so these are the options available or instance types available with amazon ec2 okay now the next question it's a very important question like many time interviewer will ask you like what is server versus serverless so basically server means like you are creating some cluster you are creating some instance any virtual machine inside that you are serverless basically like server will be managed by aws the cloud service provider they will provide you the server they will give you interface you they will not give you exact server configuration you can use the interface and you can write the code there you can do something there and you can get the output so server related services are like ec2 redshift rds emr ec2 for instance then our red safety we use for data warehousing rds for creating the rds cluster where you can store the data you can take the backup of any data then emr is for cluster computing and uh, you can use spark or any other distributed computing engines for performing any large scale of data computing then we have serverless services like lambda for uh, like uh, running or invoking any uh, scripts uh, through the lambda function so that thing you can do here then we have redshift serverless there you do not need to create redshift cluster it will be managed by aws and you can just uh, within few minutes you can work with large scale of data sets then we have glue there you can create like glue jobs uh, metadata catalog many things you can do with glue like edl things you can do basically with glue and athena with athena you can read the files from s3 bucket that thing you can do and these are serverless you do not need to worry about managing or creating the cluster or instance here okay then we have like this is very general question they will ask you in the beginning or at the end like have you done any aws certification so i will recommend you if you are uh, having very less experience or you are a fresher then go for cloud practitioner when you are in college itself that will be very helpful for you you can write that you have done cloud practitioner in your resume and your resume will be having some weightage for that that i will recommend you then as per the a recommendation of the experience if you are having like one year of experience you have solved many problems you have implemented solutions on top of aws cloud then you can go for associate level certification like solution architect 
developer or sysop admin so many people ask me is there any difference between like uh, which one is good solution architect or developer i will suggest you if you are more in coding side then you can go for developer if you are like uh, familiar with coding but you are also like want to create some solutions on top of aws by using multiple services then you can go for solution architect both are having their own weightage but in the certification if you have solution architect then also fine if you have developer then also fine Okay, if you are having more than uh, like a two or two five year of experience, then you can go for professional. So basically, professional is for like uh, who is having more experience, have designed, operate, and troubleshoot the solution using like uh, you have provided the high availability for the AWS services. So you can go for professional level certification in which you will see like DevOps engineer and uh, solution architect. Okay. Then we have specialty related certification. Like you have deep technical experience in any specific domain, which can be like machine learning or security or big data or networking. So you can do any specialized certification in that. If you are having like more than five year experience, I will say, then you can go for it and uh, it will be helpful for you. Okay. So do you have any question related with AWS services certification or any other questions you have in your mind? Then just comment down below and subscribe our channel. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.